In class today, we actually started talking about acids and bases and got a, a little better idea of how they actually work. But historically, you need to know, first of all, there was an Arrhenius definition way back toward the beginning of the 20th century. And the Arrhenius definition was that acids produce hydrogen ions and bases produce hydroxide ions. Made a lot of sense in many, many ways. But this explains most acids and bases, but it doesn't explain why ammonia turns out to be a base. And so we'll be doing that very thing, the ionization of ammonia, in a short while, but just kind of keep this in mind. Bronsted Lowry, on the other hand, their definition of acids and bases is the most currently accepted and most accurate definition. So acids, they say, are proton donors, which makes a lot of sense. That's kind of the way that Arrhenius thought of it. But there's something more than that, and that is that bases are proton acceptors, which means they take the proton or the hydrogen ion, however you want to call it, and they then take that into their chemical structure. So the neat thing about their definition is that they actually explain all acids and bases as well as why ammonia is a base. I'd like you to stop the recording and record or actually write down this particular screen. And if you didn't write down the last screen, back up the recording and uh, be sure you get that top to bottom because that will be very important in your notes. So as you can see on the left hand screen, conjugate acids receive the donated proton. And who's donating it? You'll see that on the right. Uh, actually, you don't see that on the right. I'm sorry. The, the conjugate acid is just the guy that receives the donated proton. And the conjugate base is the guy that is left after the acid has donated the hydrogen. Now, conjugates are always on the right side of the equation. The original acid and base is always going to be on the left side of the equation. And We'll explain more about how that works in just a minute. But I think it's very, very useful for you to take a look at the next screen and see how this actually works. In this screen, I'm actually able to show you how water self-ionizes. And at the same time, I'm also going to show you exactly what happens as it does that. And what we're going to do is start by calling this guy over here our acid. And we're going to call this guy over here our base. Now, if we look back at the brunsted lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor. So this guy is going to donate one hydrogen atom, or a proton, I'm sorry, not an atom. It's a proton because it's missing an electron. And the hydrogen atom has a proton and an electron. So anyway, we donate the proton. Now, the base is the proton acceptor. So acid has donated, base has received. And now we see something that we call the hydronium. So we can show them in their red and blue existence. <laughs> and now, because this is a hydronium ion, he's no longer a base. He is what we call a conjugate acid. And these designations here of acid and base disappear. And now we have a hydronium ion, which is called a conjugate base. I'm going to abbreviate it as C base, and, or C acid. No, he's a C acid. Yeah, because the original base becomes the conjugate acid, and the original acid 
which was over on the left there, is now the conjugate acid or conjugate base. So now we have our conjugate base over here and our conjugate acid over here. And the conjugate acid in this case is called the hydronium ion. Oddly enough, little hydrogen ions don't bip around on their own. As soon as they run into another water, they just hook onto it right away. But I just wanted to use that one guy as an example. So now we have our conjugate base, and let's get these guys now in their new respective color. So with the base showing as blue and the acid showing as red, you can see our hydronium ion is indeed an acid, but it's a C acid simply because we write it on the right side of an equation, which you're going to see in just a moment. In the meantime, I'm going to take this thing backwards because that does happen. This is actually an equilibrium reaction. And our hydronium ion is going to actually disappear. Not disappear, it's just that he's not going to be called a hydronium ion anymore because he's going to lose that hydrogen. So when that guy goes back to his original molecule, he is no longer going to be a C base. He is going to be an acid. And the conjugate acid is now back to being the base. And you say, well, they're both water molecules. Yes, but that's the way they're going to act. And it's not certainly the hydronium ion anymore. So let's do this whole process again. This guy comes over here. Now the base becomes the conjugate acid. And the acid becomes the conjugate base. And so we can do this back and forth all we want. But at this point, this is the hydronium ion and no longer a water molecule because he has a hydrogen on him now. If we get rid of the hydronium ion definition, we can take this guy back here. And now what was originally the acid is indeed still the acid. And what was the C base, see the C base? Yeah, now he's the acid. And the base over here is a water molecule. This is called the self-ionization of water. Let's look at this now, and we're going to write it as we would when we do a Bronsted-Lowry type of a, a situation. So this guy is the water, and he is going to lose an, a hydrogen, or a proton, a hydrogen ion, I was going to say, but he's actually losing a proton, and that goes to this water here. So let's look at this on the board and see exactly how that works. So now you see the water having lost one hydrogen or hydrogen ion and or you could call it a proton. And so on the right side, we have the conjugate base. On the left side, that guy was our actual acid. This water right here is our Base. Now, we also have to uh, track what the water did, and so let's move this base here over a little bit, the definition, and we're going to write one for the water becoming the acid, or the conjugate acid. So here... Now you can see how I want you to do your homework. 
The acid and the base are identified here, and the conjugate base And the conjugate base now is our hydronium ion. And let's look at that side by side with what we did on the other side. And, oh, let's get split screen. And here we go. Okay, so we're looking at now on the, on the equation side on the right, the way we write it, anything written on the right is going to be the acid and the base. The stuff written on the right are going to be the C base, our conjugate base, and the conjugate acid. Okay? So, let's look at the left side of the equation. That's what exists right now on the left-hand side, or that is on the left-hand screen, how water self-ionizes. So, I'm going to do the motion that gave us the hydronium ion which instead of the base now is a C acid and the acid is now the C base. And so the C base you see on the right hand screen as the hydroxide ion and on the right side you see the C, whoops, C acid, not base. So, glad I fixed that before I put this video out online. So, at any rate, here we have it. So, you can see the right side is the left screen as it exists right now. When I move it back, now we have the left side of the equation and our two water molecules. One of them acts as a base the other one acts as an acid according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition. I hope you find this very helpful and we'll do just one more thing. Notice if I write this backwards and let's compare this to the other one and, and see what the actual comparison is visually. You'll see on the left hand screen I have the water molecules as the acid and base. On the other screen I have what used to be the conjugate base and the conjugate acid acting as the acid and the base. Well, what does that mean? That simply means that in Bronsted-Lowry terms we have a reversible reaction. By convention anything that we write on the right side as you see here is the acid and the base. Well the old acid and base were the two water molecules. So what I did is I simply reversed the side that they're on, and that changes our nomenclature. So now what was the C base, the hydroxide ion, is now the base. What was the C acid, conjugate acid, is now the acid, simply because it's on the left side of the equation. So our little water molecule that we were doing over here, this, this little change thing here, See, it has nothing to do with left and right per se because in the water they're all over the place. But when we try to account for everything, make sure we have the same number of atoms on both sides of the equation so that the law of conservation of mass is identified and used, we're in good shape. So that's how that little guy works. Now we're going to see why ammonia can be properly explained with the Brunsted-Lowry definition because it defines things a lot differently. With Brunsted-Lowry now, this guy becomes the acid, the water molecule. The ammonia becomes the base. And why is the ammonia the base? Because he accepts the proton, which is why we have NH41+, from the water and why the water becomes the hydroxide ion 
which is now considered a conjugate base. So the base, let's follow the lines, became the conjugate acid. The acid became the conjugate base. In the same way that I wrote the reverse for the self-ionization of water, I could do the same thing with the ammonia reaction. So that ammonia can, it is now starting out as the ammonium ion and becomes ammonia. He acts as an acid then because he's donating the hydrogen to the hydroxide ion. So we, we trace that by marking these lines. This is what I need to see in your homework. Must have these lines and they must be identified as respective acid conjugate base pair and the base conjugate acid pair. I hope you find this video very helpful and thanks for watching.